Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon. Uh, it is my pleasure to see that many people on the chat. Tonight, we have uh, an honor to guest Eva Grabska, who will present her experience and knowledge regarding to the satellite uh, analysis with the usage of R. <clears throat> my name is Marcin Kosinski. I'm a member of uh, YRM Foundation. Uh, today's webinar will last 60 minutes in total. I hope that Eva will have some content that will last for around 40, 45 minutes. And then at the end, we will have Q&A session. So if you have any questions already, please post them on chat. Uh, if you have any questions during the talk, also post your questions there. Let us know where are you from. Uh, we also uh, invite you to apply for being a speaker. You can also type uh, a message that you'd like to, to present. Um, uh, okay, I'm not taking any much of your time. I would like to introduce Eva, Eva Grabska. Eva is a PhD candidate in geography at Jagiellonia University and a research assistant at the Faculty of Forestry, the University of Agri Agriculture in Krakow. Uh, in her research, she focuses on the use of Sentinel-2 satellite ima imagery in determining different forest characteristics, such as uh, tree species composition or detection of forest disturbances. She's also a big R enthusiast and she mostly uses it in, in her analysis. Um, Eva also gave a very successful workshop at YR 2020 conference, so we are very happy for the, for the cooperation and that we have you here. Uh, so Eva, the floor is yours. Good luck, I will still be here and uh, when you are done, I will start the Q&A session. Uh, thank you, Martin, for uh, the introduction and hello everyone. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I'm Eva, and uh, today I will shortly present you some possibilities how to process satellite imagery in R. And um, this webinar, uh, Martin mentioned some workshop, and this webinar is partly based on, on the workshop that I had earlier this year. And uh, you can find, I will now share my screen so you could uh, see the, the short presentation. Okay, I hope it's visible. Yes, great. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, there were this workshop that I had. And uh, on GitHub, you can find some script and also some sort of short presentation uh, from this workshop. This is the, the name of this repository satellite. And also on my GitHub, uh, you can find uh, this repository, but also other uh, repositories with processing of Sentinel-2 images. So if you would like to, I, yeah, enjoy and use it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think I will move on now. And what are the possibilities to process satellite imagery in R? And I mean optical imagery, so imagery from visible or infrared part of the spectrum, because this is kind of imagery that I, that I work with. And uh, there are plenty of packages. Some of them are, uh, I think I, they, they are just for processing of satellite images, but also there are other packages that can be used, not necessarily, not necessary uh, design for, for remote sensing. And the uh, first two uh, are for download and pre-processing. So they are called get spatial data and send to R. And I, later in this webinar, I will show you some, some functions from these packages. Uh, there are some, uh, pa uh, some packages for basic analysis of rasters because many of you probably know that satellite images are uh, often, most often in raster format, in GeoTIFF or uh, JPEG as well. So uh, raster package, which is very popular package in, um, in spatial analysis in general, uh, it's, very, it's also very nice package for remote sensing. And there is a, like a new version of this package and it came out this year, it's called Terra. I will yeah, briefly talk about it later. Um, there is one tool, one package designed for uh, processing of remote sensing data, and it's called RS Toolbox. 
And it's also very popular, very nice. And I will also show something from this package later. And there are some packages, like maybe more advanced calculation of satellite images. Uh, if you, for example, have large image data sets or time series of time, uh, image uh, satellite images, you can use package called STARS. And uh, of course, uh, if you um, would like to classify your image, you could use other packages. Like if you would like to classify image with some machine learning and deep learning algorithm, you would probably use Carrot or other packages like that. Uh, also, if you analyze data frames with reflectance values of particular object, you can use uh, packages like DeepLear, or if you want to visualize that values, you can use ggplot too. So basically the, this list of packages is, is very large. And these ones uh, are the, the ones that I know that I use, but not necessarily all that can be used. And I think, yeah, I think I will now move to, to this first part. So downloading and pre-processing data. And um, maybe you've heard, or some people can, can say that downloading data, uh, such large uh, data sets to your disk is not optimal and it's too time consuming. And uh, I, I agree uh, in some part because uh, there are some other services, cloud-based services that can be used for that. So you know, don't have to, to download this data, but anyway, in some cases, why not? I, I use downloading to R, in R and uh, it's, it's, it's a nice way because there are nice packages to do that. And there are two packages that I use Mm, as I mentioned, get spatial data and send to R. And one important thing, maybe some of you know, uh, I all of this webinar and this presentation, I, I talk about uh, freely available data. So probably you've heard about Landsat data. It is like uh, the longest mission, satellite mission uh, from NASA and USGS. And uh, it is for free, of course, and also Sentinel uh, data, which is from European Space Agency, it's, it is also for free. So I don't uh, work and I won't talk about commercial missions, which uh, should be paid to, to use. And uh, coming back to this topic, um, in order to download data, you have to sign up on uh, some uh, websites. And if you want to download Sentinel-2 data, for example, but also Sentinel-1 or, or 3, uh, you have to sign up on this uh, scientific hub from Copernicus. And if you want to download Landsat or MODIS or SRTM, you have to have an account on Earth Explorer USGS Gov. If you have an account, then you can download data from this, uh, directly from this website or of course from R in R and I think I will now, yeah, I will now um, switch to my R studio because it will be easier to, to follow. As, as I mentioned, the script is on GitHub and it is also with comment. So the step-by-step -step processing, downloading steps, it's all described there. Here are only highlights because we have like 30, 40 minutes. So um, it's not enough to do that uh, all. And uh, yeah, the list of packages, uh, stuff like that. Um, I will start with get spatial data because I mostly use it for downloading data. And this get spatial data is as far as I know, it's, it's hosted on, on GitHub. So in order to install it, you have to install this DevTools package uh, firstly, then you have to use this, this, uh, this function. But it's, you know, you can find a manual to that, to that uh, package. It's all described there. And it's also in the script on GitHub. So I will not talk much about that. And yeah, uh, so as I told you, we have to have an account to download the data. And uh, today I will focus on Sentinel-2 data. So I will now just try to um, log in into this uh, Copernicus hub. 
And yeah, if you have an account, you just put here your username and then you have to just uh, enter your password. And it's, everything is okay, you, you were successful. And uh, what next? You are, led, you are already logged in. Uh, so let's check the products that are available through this Get Spatial Data Package. And um, yeah, I will make this bigger. Wow, a lot of products. So it doesn't look good on my computer, but sorry for that. Uh, we have like 162 products available. So it is quite a big number. Uh, of course, Sentinel-1, 2, uh, it's available. We have Landsat as well. And we have a vari variety of Modis products. You know all of these Modis products. You have to check these this codes because I can't say what, what it means, probably some some different products, different layers. And uh, also SRTM, so the digital elevation model, global model is also available in this package. And yeah, I will first. Um, coming back to, to this, um, we have these products names. So I decide uh, in this webinar, and most, mostly I decide to download Sentinel-2 data because I work with Sentinel-2 data a lot. Uh, so uh, let's now um, set the area of interest because I would like probably if you want to download data, you don't want to download data for whole over the world, but just for some specific place. And there is this uh, function called set area of interest. And if you run this, uh, the window viewer will show up. Uh, there is some problem with this uh, default layer, but if I switch to OpenStreetMap, I have a map. So if I zoom in to, for example, Krakow, I can uh, draw rectangle or some other shape uh, with area of interest. So I will do that now and I will click that. And now it's, there is, I think everything is okay. There is this area of interest already set. Uh, you can check that uh, using, for example, view um, area of interest. Yeah, like that. And it's okay. So, so we have this. Another argument that we, uh, we often specify is the time range. And then, um, of course, the name of the um, product. So as you could see earlier, there are a lot of products. I choose, I select Sentinel-2 because I would like to download or at this moment just get the records. So search for Sentinel-2. And I will also specify the time range. And there is this function, as you can see, it's called get records. I run this function. It will take just a moment. I uh, set rather short, as you can see, like 10, 11 days, because, you know, if you would have like five years or something, it would also take more time to, to search. And it's already here. As you can see in the environment section, uh, there are my records. As you can see, there are eight observations. I will generally, will open this um, data frame. And here you have a lot of, yeah, a lot of attributes, 34, uh, with different properties of this image. So you have like metadata. And some of these, um, some of these variables are, are important, some are less important. But for example, you have date acquisition. So we have like images from different days. Uh, we have something which is also important. It's cloud coverage. There is a, a variable called cloud cough. It's cloud coverage because probably you know that if we have like 99% of cloud coverage, the image is useless, completely useless. Even if we have 30, it's in most of the cases is also useless. So I usually define this threshold rather like 10% or something. And yeah, remember that 
we can um, use this cloud coverage threshold. Another thing here is there are some other um, other attributes, but another which is quite important is level of processing, because there are two levels uh, of processing of Sentinel to data. There is this one C level, and it's before correction, and two A is after correction. Usually, to some just do some simple task. Uh, 1C is enough. If you do some more sophisticated and fast analysis, you should probably use this 2A, but you know, it depends. And uh, okay, I have these eight observations here, but I would like to limit my uh, query. Uh, so I will set this like a simple uh, condition here. I have these records and I will set the uh, cloud coverage uh, threshold to 10%. And I will also choose the this level 1C, so before correction. And what happened now, uh, out of eight uh, initial eight observation, we have one observation. And I can assume that it's fine and I can download it. But if you want to uh, check how it looks like, like a preview of this image, you can also do that. You have like this get preview, view preview, plot preview uh, functions. I will not run this right now, but you can check that later. And uh, assuming that the image is okay, I would like to download it. There is this get Sentinel data um, function. For other uh, products, you can use get Modis or get Landsat data. So it's like, uh, it's like the same, just the name changes. There is also like a general function called date, get data. And I will now try to run it, but yeah, there is some error because in the last two days or three days, there is some error connected to, I think, uh, ESA services because there is this error. Uh, I tried Landsat and it worked. So basically it, it's an error like, like yeah, in, in a couple of days it came out. And I hope it will be fixed soon. So right now I can't download, but no worries. I have already a lot of downloaded data on my computer. So I will show you something on these uh, images. Uh, so yeah, that's all about downloading. It's pretty, I think it's pretty easy. And it's really nice that you can like, yeah, look for a lot of images, just click download and there are downloading like maybe a lot of time, but uh, but lot of images at once. And um, what about this second package? This package is called send to R. So we, we are now, for now we are done with get spatial data and send to R package, uh, as the name suggests, it's, uh, it's for Sentinel-2 data. And uh, you also uh, could download the data here uh, using S2 download. Uh, but what is also really nice in this package that uh, not only downloading is possible, but also very nice functions to, uh, to process the data. So for example, if you download the data, probably some of you know, if you download the data, the data is raw in, in some, some kind um, not process enough. For example, separate bands are stored in separate files. And for example, you would like to create one composition from it or composite or stack, you could use this S2 translate. And uh, here you just put the uh, path to folder which have the same format and it's easy. Uh, what is also really nice, there are functions to calculate indices. And indices are like a simple equations on, on uh, imaginary bands. Uh, and they are calculated in order to highlight some properties. Probably some of you heard about normalized difference vegetation index. It's like a most popular index in the world. And it uh, highlights the areas with healthy vegetation. And in this S2 calc indices, you can find like 200 or hundreds of, of indices and it's really nice. 
Uh, also some masking function. If you want to uh, do cloud masking, you can use that. There is also one wrapper function uh, with entire processing chain. So in the send to air function, you can set like everything and it's all of the processing like download and pre-process of Sentinel to data is done. Yeah, I think that's a quite nice package as well uh, as get spatial data. And what now? Uh, let's assume that we download, uh, downloaded our data and we have uh, it on our computers. So what, what's next? Uh, we have to somehow read the, uh, this image uh, and visualize that and also some maybe check the properties uh, of this image in order to determine if it's proper to, to further analysis. Uh, so I will now work, as you can see, the path is really, really long uh, because if you download the data from Sentinel, the, the folders are yeah, quite complicated, long names. Uh, but you can, uh, um, at some point, you, you just need to find a, a image data folder and inside of this image data folder, you can find the bands from Sentinel-2 that you will use. Uh, so I will set the working directory to this super long folder from Sentinel-2 and I will list files. And what do we have here? Um, in this image data, I have, as I told you before, uh, there are separate bands in separate uh, files. They are in JPEG format. And uh, as you can see that the names are quite long, but at the end of this name, you have the B01, D02, etc. And those are the number of the bands. Sentinel-2 imagery has uh, 13 bands, but only uh, 10 are usually used in land application. So we have band 02, and it is called uh, visible blue. I mean, this is uh, acquired in visible blue uh, waves. Uh, B03 is green, B4 is red. Here we have this red edge region from five to seven. Yeah, you can check that, of course, in the internet. Uh, we have uh, B08, which is also a near infrared band. And I will uh, later use this visible and this near infrared band in composing a stack, one stack. Mm. Okay, let's try to now read the data. And here I will introduce you to raster package. It is very popular package in spatial analysis, as I told you. And uh, let's try to read a single band. I will choose this five B05 band and read it with the raster function. And we have it here, of course, R1 is the raster layer. But what about uh, other bands? Because if you have a single band, it's not easy to visually interpret you contain less information than having all of the bands. So basically there is no point in using single bands. Usually when working with satellite images, uh, you use stacks or composites or composition. And there is nice function in uh, R from raster package called stack. The very similar function is brick function also from this raster package. And as you can see here, I put the names of this file. I already set the working directory here, so I didn't have to put all of this very long paths uh, again, but uh, I uh, precise, I define here uh, band two, three, four, and eight. So um, four bands, three visible ones and one near infrared band. And look, now the R1 is a raster layer, but S1 is of course, of course a raster stack. And if I print information about these uh, rasters, you can see um, here we have a single band with resolutions 20 of 20 meters. Now, now I will print the information about S1 and is a raster stack, of course, with four 
layers. So four bands are in this one stack. Um, and the resolutions is be better because it's 10 meters. So these four bands from Sentinel-2 imagery are uh, in 10 meters resolution, spatial resolution, while this B5 and others are in 20 meters resolution. Okay, we have this um, rasters in our studio. Um, I will now change the name because as you can see here, uh, there are the names of the bands and there are default name of the bands from just from the file name. So in order to make the further processing or analysis easier to follow, I will now change the names of this. So I will change it to the real, real name. So I will, be, I will have blue, green, red and near infrared bands. And now to check the properties, we can plot our raster, our satellite images. And what would happen, I will just use this simple plot function, which probably all of you know. Uh, I plotted this single raster in the default R uh, terrain color scale. So basically you cannot distinguish anything. And what about the raster stack? What will happen now? It's rather slow when working with the whole imagery. As you can see, it, it will, yeah, it slowly appears. As you can see, there is like a millions of cells. So it's quite long process to, to plot. And here we can see this single bands again, because we have a stack, there are four bands. Oh yeah, now we have four bands. But still, it's really hard to interpret. Mm, so what can we do? We can use function from a raster package, which is called plot RGB. And it's for plotting uh, RGB compositions. So uh, for red color, green color, and blue color on the screen, you will assign uh, bands from uh, our stack. And if I plot it in a default, uh, order here, I didn't specify the order, it will just took a blue band as red, green as green, and red as blue. So it's kind of reversed. Uh, and if I specify uh, the um, red is free, so red indeed, uh, green is green, blue is blue, you can see uh, it's not maybe uh, very yeah, we can change the stretch as well. It looks like, yeah, a little bit blurry, I, I don't know. But uh, here you can see it's even worse. Here you can see uh, something which is called true color composite. So it's basically uh, similar to what human eye can see. But what about this uh, near infrared band? We of course can put it in our RGB composition as well. So we also can plot it. And I will now just do something like that. I specify um, two compositions next to each other. And I will enlarge this view. Uh, I also specify the extent here with this, uh, with just a vector of, of uh, coordinates uh, in order to make this inter interpretation easier. So you can see on the left uh, true color composition and on the right, you can see uh, color compositions with near infrared band. And it is very reddish because uh, near infrared band, so band four from our stack uh, was set as a red color. And because there is a lot of vegetation here and vegetation has very large values in near infrared, because it re reflects a lot of uh, near infrared, the image uh, seems very red. Uh, so plot RGB is a better way of plotting than, than just a simple plot. And what are other useful tools from raster package? Uh, you have, for example, a crop. Uh, if you want to crop uh, your image to some extent, you also specify the coordinates. Uh, you have something, yeah, I will now crop it maybe. 
and show you another tool because sometimes you just want to examine the values of, of satellite images to check the histograms or to check the scatter plots. And there is a nice way to do that. It's called uh, PERS. Mm, and as you can see, it's like a matrix of scatter plots and of histograms. Or there, there are also cor correlation coefficients. So uh, before uh, analyzing um, images, you can just check its values. And another very useful tool from Rusted Package, if you have your, for example, if you cropped your image and you want to uh, save it on the on your disk, uh, you just use write Rusted function and specify the, the object, of course, and also specify the path uh, and the name with the extension. The extensions is important. I usually use GeoTIFF, so just TIFF here. And one last thing, I think, uh, at this introduction, uh, if you want to extract, sorry, if you want to extract one element from, from the image, which is a stack, because as you know, in R, there are a lot of elements which are composed of many elements. So there are objects which are composed of some other elements. And if you want to extract uh, one band from the layer stack, uh, you either use double square brackets or a dollar sign. And it's easy like that. You can also subset like uh, select free. Okay. We still have some time. So let's move on maybe to some processing of data, some real processing of data. And I already told something about indices and this normalized difference vegetation uh, index, uh, which is very popular. It uses the difference between uh, near infrared and uh, visible red bands. And if you if you have image which is a, a raster stack, you can just select the proper bands and put it in the equation because rasters are like any other objects in R, you can just you know do, do the subtraction, division, uh, etc. You can you can do equation. Uh, similarly, you can I will maybe skip this part. Uh, similarly, you can uh, subtract two images from each other. For example, if you uh, would like to check how the area changed, it's the very simple method. You can do just the difference between these two images. So um, let's imagine that we have image from 2020 and 2015, and I want to change, want to check what area um, changed. And in order to do that, and generally when you work with uh, two or more rasters and you want to process them together in this kind of simple function, but also more, more sophisticated one, they have to have exactly the same extent, exactly the same spatial resolution and exactly the same coordinate reference system. And to check if the rasters are in this the same um, extent, etc. Et uh, you can use function which is called compare rest. And the result of this function, uh, so if you want to, for example, do something like that, do the difference, calculate the difference between these images, you have to check. And the result of this function is either true, if everything is okay, and you can process that, or false with the uh, with the uh, information, what, what is wrong? Uh, I mean, there will be information that, for example, the spatial extent is different. And then before going into this difference, calculating this difference, you just have to uh, use some tools to crop the area or resample this, this area. Uh, as I told you, there's this crop function. There's also a function called resample to resample data. If you have a different resolution. And yeah, uh, this, this simple, simple calculation can be done um, and very useful functions can, can be found in raster package, but uh, the package which is designed for remote sensing analysis is called RS Toolbox. And uh, I really like this package. Um, because it contains a lot of useful functions. For example, 
you can do classification of images. It is like a, a very popular uh, way of doing that. Uh, you can do some uh, transformations of images, like, for example, uh, raster PCA, so pr principal component analysis, it's a popular statistical method. Uh, you can do that on your uh, multi multi band stacks. So from original, I will now read uh, another image, which is called Warsaw. And as you can see, it contains 10 bands. So if I would like to um, reduce the size of my data set, I can calculate this raster PCA. Uh, there is also another function, which is called tesselt cap. It also is very popular uh, method in remote sensing. It also like transform the original bands into the new mm, dimensions. And maybe one last thing in this uh, script, mm, the function that I like the most and I use it the most uh, because I often classify images. If you have an image and you want to classify the image into different land cover, or for example, in my case, I classify often tree species. So um, I want to classify the forest uh, area into tree species or just land cover. Uh, I will use classification and uh, very popular type of classification, I think the more, more popular is uh, supervised classification. And in this type of classification, you have to provide reference data for training. And usually uh, this training data, either polygons or points are in shapefile format. And uh, yeah, I will maybe show you how it looked li looks like because uh, let's assume I have, I want to classify Warsaw image that I read into land cover classes. So I need this training data. So I read training data with a shapefile function. It is also from raster package. And this, as you can see, let's check the properties. This uh, 50 features, 50 polygons that will be used to train my uh, model to classify my image. And when I checked what classes are available, there are six classes, different types of land cover. And I will put it here, of course, super class. I will maybe check the help for this super class classification, supervised classification. Uh, of course, you have to put your image here, define your image, train data. And uh, what is really nice about this function is that uh, using this super class, you can do classification and validation at once. So if you specify both training and validation data, you have uh, the, the output of this function is uh, both the, the classification model. So for example, the map, but also the accuracy assessment. And here I just split the, the, the this reference areas into training and validation. I also specified class, so the attribute which provides the information about the land cover class. And I also select model. It is also nice in this function, separate class, that you can um, use any kind of algorithm like as uh, sub per vector machines or uh, random forest or any other deep learning or machine learning methods. And yeah, you, you also have to specify some other parameters, but uh, let's move on. Uh, the result of this classification, I already have one classification because it would take like one minute or two minutes here. So I already did that classification and the result of this classification is a object composed of six elements. And as I told you, this is a nice um, tool because it contains our model, our map, but also the accuracy assessment. If you specify the uh, validation areas as well. Um, so yeah, maybe it's not so obvious at the 
first look, but I highly recommend that tool to you. Uh, another type of classification, which is unsupervised classification, is also available uh, in um, RS toolbox, and it's the function called unsupervised class. And the result, one last thing here, uh, the result of your classification is of course also a map. So if you specify the map element of your classification, it will print a map. Yeah, here it doesn't look good because I, yeah. But you can see uh, the classification result. Of course, you can write uh, this map on your disk, save this map on your disk. And I think that's all in this part. As I told you, this script, which is step-by-step -step description of, of, this, of these tools and this processing chain is available on GitHub. And one last thing, if I have still time, Martin. Yeah, great. Uh, I will come back to this presentation and few words about packages because yeah, we, we had uh, 40 minutes. So that, that's not a lot to know everything. And also I don't know all the packages in the world. So there are probably some that I didn't use yet. And uh, there are some which may be useful. And I mentioned that Terra package, it came out this year, Terra package, uh, is a package developed to replace raster. So uh, as our authors uh, say, it is simpler and it is faster. And as far as I checked some simple stuff like cropping, it was really faster than raster. And uh, the description of this package is really nice because you have the, uh, all of these functions with change names or something are just described at the beginning. So if you know Raster package, it will be, I think, easy to, to change to this Terra package. And uh, what is, I think, maybe a problem here in this Terra package is that the, um, as, as I, I read the data using Raster package, it was in Raster stack format or it was a raster stack type of object. While you read data with Terra, it will be something called spot raster or something like that. So it's different kind of object. And for example, this toolbox, RS toolbox, uh, is designed uh, to process raster stacks. So the format which is provided with raster but not with Terra. So I think it will be fixed soon or there will be some, some solution because uh, I think it will, will become more, more popular soon, this package. Um, other packages, I didn't use them a lot. Uh, there is more, some more advanced package to, to uh, analyze something called spatial temporal arrays and this is stars package. So if you have large data sets or time series of satellite images, you can use the stars package. And there are also Landsat package. I didn't use that, but it contains a function to, to do normalization, correction of Landsat data. Uh, there is also some package called HS star to hyperspectral data. So if you work with hyperspectral data, it can be useful. Uh, raster vis uh, is for visualization of raster data and also quite new RGEE, so uh, binding package for calling Google Earth Engine in R. It may be also useful. And I think that's all. That was really a short time to present all of this, but I hope that you liked it and you will some, sometime use it. So thank you. Thanks, Eva. Yeah, that was a lot of information, very condensed in those uh, 40 minutes. Uh, I think we can move to the Q&A session. If you could stop sharing the screen, yeah. awesome. There's, there's a lot of questions, but before we start, uh, I would just like to say that we can put all those uh, GitHub URLs in the description of the video uh, after the stream so that it will be easier to, to be found. So uh, that's just, just a technical 
comment and let's start with uh, questions. There is a lot of them. So the first one from Nathaniel, uh, where are the best portals to get raster data for environmental analysis? Do you have, do you have any idea? Do you have any experience with that? Uh, I, I think there are a lot of raster data with environmental properties, but I don't know what is your, your specific objective. Uh, you can use satellite imagery to, to create some maps as well. Uh, one thing that come to my, uh, comes to my mind is maybe um, some uh, Copernicus or European Space Agency services. You can find, for example, Corinne Landcover there or some other uh, raster uh, maps with, with forests, with different types of land cover. But I think there is plenty of useful rasters about uh, environment that you can find. So that's only one. Okay. Yeah, Nathaniel, if you could be more specific then just let uh, post another question and maybe another one from Nathaniel. Um, will weather play a significant role when comparing differences between raster data from two time periods? Um, weather uh, meaning the atmospheric conditions, I assume. Uh, if you, uh, I think if you use this, cor this data after correction, this is called like atmospheric correction, they should be comparable, so. So I think that's, that's enough. Okay, yeah, good to know, good to know. Humanity has so many achievements that uh, we can use to help analyzing data. Uh, are there any specific books that you would recommend for newcomers to imaginary analysis world? Mm. Is there any book that you have in mind? In R or in general? In R. I don't know any other programming languages. I don't other. read. <laughs> I don't read books. I usually, when I was learning, I used these tutorials in in uh, which are freely available in in the internet. So we can mm -hmm. make a list even if you want to. Also, there are some tutorials on on YouTube or other portals like Udemy or something. So there's a lot of possibilities to learn and. Of course, there are also some books, but but I prefer rather the, the shorter uh, forms of... Uh, I see. So internet is full of... Uh, yeah. Full of places and materials. Good to know, good to know. So that means... You can use my GitHub as well. It's... Oh, yeah. I would also start with Eva's GitHub as well. Uh, already, maybe some more technical. Do you prefer stack function over the brick one? Do you think there are some differences between the two? I, I don't know. I never notice any difference. And I just got used mm -hmm. to stack, so I use stack, but probably it will be the same. Okay. Good to know uh, the, the reaction of experts. So you, you don't have a preference, so pro probably there isn't, isn't much more difference. Alrighty, how long it took you to master all the material that you presented? Was it a day, a year, uh, 10 years? At, to learn all of this or to put it in one script? I think to learn, to, uh, to understand. To I think I, I started learning R like maybe two and a half year ago. And I'm still learning a lot. So I'm, yeah, I keep learning. So that's nice. And it's also nice that there, there are these new packages with new functions. So you can learn some new stuff with, with that in R. But that's why R is such an awesome software, right? Yeah, there's a community that builds up the software. Sure. Okay. There's a full list of questions. So I just keep uh, looking at them. Um, Question about downloading. Uh, whether in R the whole image scene is downloaded or only the declared area? Uh, all scene. Uh, it's not called scene, maybe, but in case of Sentinel 2, it's called tile. It's like a 100 by 100 kilometers tile in this grid, mm -hmm. MSGRS or something. And uh, also in Landsat case, this is like a whole whole scene. And I don't know if you can crop it or cut it. 
just mm -hmm. to download this smaller part. I, I don't think so. And what, what would be the size of this of this tile? Um, it's one like one gigabyte. Uh, yeah, something like that. Sometimes okay. there, as you could see in this uh, in this script, uh, the, the 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 tile that I show you was like a half of a tile because it was at the border of of the orbit. So it is smaller. It was not a full square. It was just like you know. I probably you, you noticed. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's smaller. Okay, so when we are talking about the size, what is the biggest imagery data set that you had a chance to work with? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I sometimes just download like 50 or 100 images at once. So they're quite a uh, large uh, stuff. But what took me the longest, it was probably the classification of forest types for the whole Polish Carpathians. So it was like I just uh, switched it on, run it, and I came back home. And later, I, next day, I, it was ready. But I think Alrighty. it was, yeah. My, so sometimes it's even 100 images, each contain one gigabyte. But that's the size. Yeah. Oh my, that's that's a lot of data. Yeah, that's what 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 I said at the beginning that it may be something not not optimal to to do that in R, but I do that and wait. Okay, okay. Let's switch to functions and packages maybe for a moment. Uh, there's a question regarding tidyverse. Is there any way knowledge of tidyverse helps analyzing the data? Is there is it is it needed to know such structure of like this tidyverse? Um, uh, yeah, the question is how much the knowledge of tidyverse make the work with this data easier. I think not not much because I don't have much <laughs> knowledge on tidyverse, and I somehow managed to. Okay, so it's not I mean, required. It, it may be useful if you want to do some chains, processing chains probably, but mm -hmm. if you, yeah, if you uh, achieve some level, probably it will be useful, but at the beginning, I don't know. Great, great. So very close. Another question about functions. Um, are there any functions to automatically identify Terran features? alignment. What was the last word? Uh, terrain features, comma, as line element. I don't understand, but uh, I don't know if you mean that someone means that, but some function to, to calculate or aspect or something like that. Because there are these functions, but but I don't know if that's the question. I think the the, the main part of the question should be rather uh, other functions that they define ter terrain features automatically, like geological oh. fold. That's one of the features. Or maybe how to identify like objects on the imagery automatically. Because okay, if, let's skip it. if that, yeah, we can use uh, unsupervised classifications on clustering. So you have this object, but I don't know. No, I'm not an expert. So I uh, even sometimes don't know if that is connected or clear. So maybe for the RS toolbox functions, um, do they work for Sentinel data as well as Landstat data? Uh, they worked. Uh, work, I mean, uh, but there are some problems. For example, there is this function called tasseled cap, which is a very popular uh, transformation. And in, in this RS toolbox, it's designed for Landsat data. But I did it with Sentinel-2 data too. Probably the coefficients in this uh, script, in these functions are a, a little bit different uh, than, than for Landsat, yeah, in Sentinel. So in some cases, it might be designed for Landsat, but for example, raster PCA or support class functions are, are sure can, can be used with Sentinel too. 
Okay. There are a few more and I will uh, let you go. There's one from Squint. Uh, he says that that was a great presentation and he has a question. Yeah. Is it possible to get night light lights, nighttime lights, sorry, nighttime lights data from Sentinel? Uh, I think no, because it's like sun synchronous orbit. So it follows the area which is in the daylight, I guess. Never heard about night light images from Sentinel. That's the answer. That's the answer. Okay, there's one, um, in my opinion, complicated, but let's try. How to process data in net CDF format in an irregular grid? Hmm. I've, I've some, I, I, th this week I, I've read something about this format and for sure there is a way, but yeah, I cannot say right now because I didn't work with this format. I only heard that this format exists and it, it, it can be done for uh, in Earth. Okay. For sure. This is what I thought like uh, yeah. the community brought so much infrastructure and software that you can't be an expert in every of them. Yeah. I think that's totally fine. Mm. And we've got the last one. Okay. The last one from Eugen Hickey. Could you tell us briefly about your work on vegetarian profiles? Uh, you mean the spectral profiles? Uh, I suppose. Uh, because, yeah, I, I work with vegetation mainly because I work in, in forests. So I, I analyze, uh, sometimes analyze the spectral signatures or curves uh, of vegetation. So I basically have my reference samples like polygons, which are drawn or acquired, but in some other GIS software, because in R it would be hard to, to draw something. And I just calculate some mean, like extract means, uh, for for these reference samples, and now then I use, for example, Diplier or Reshape two tools to make these data frames in proper format. Uh, yeah, that's I think that somewhere in this script from the workshop there is something like that, so you can check mm -hmm. that at the end probably. Okay. Okay. Eva, those were all the questions. It looks like it must be an interesting talk because there were so, ma so many of them. Uh, let's get your URLs to GitHub in the description of our video so people can get to the materials after the stream is done. Uh, I'm thankful that you join us today and uh, spend some time preparing all the materials. If you have any last famous words, that's the chance. And then let's call it today. Uh, just thank you. It was a, really a pleasure to be here and I really enjoy that you enjoy this uh, topic. And I really, I'm really happy that people are interested in processing uh, satellite images because it's, it's for free and R is for free. So it's basically we can examine uh, the whole world using that. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy and thank you. Okay. Thanks, Eva, and thank you, everyone. See you next week, the very same time.